boring, but the gospel we preach never is. Come study the Bible with the Church of Christ. We're meeting at 250 the Boulevard. Our new times are Sundays at 9 a.m. for Bible study and 10 a.m. for worship, and then Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Come visit with us. We hope to see you there. Don't flex your muscles. Flex your mind. Watch a word from the Lord. Thursday nights at 9. I did it for science. What power? What power? After losing the debate to the KKK, Michael went to school. Just being a preacher in general is not a job for sissies. Uh, you have to have thick skin. You have to be ready to be uh, scrutinized on all points. Uh, you know, that's, that's one of the things that I believe that they were really trying to help us with, you know, in the school that I was attending was that some of the instructors, they would, you know, they would kind of pick out some guys and they would just be really hard on them for a certain amount of time. Visit the Martinsville Church of Christ. Services 11 a.m. on Sunday, 7 p.m. on Wednesday. Watch them on TV Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Comcast Channel 18 and Sunday night on WGSR at 9 p.m. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily reflect the views of the station, its employees, or ownership. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Word of the Lord. James O'Phil here with you. And we are glad that you are uh, watching. Hope you're ready for another study from God's Word. We're going to give you our content information like we like to do so that you know how to reach us and if you'd like to study the Bible with us or assemble with us, here's how you can do that. We, are, we meet at 250 the Boulevard in Eden, North Carolina. My phone number is 276-340-2653, wordfromthelord at gmail.com. If you'd like to uh, email me a Bible question or have a Bible uh, study that way, be glad to do that too. Or if you'd like a copy of these programs or any of the things we're doing. Uh, friends, I really uh, uh, want to encourage you to come out and, and assemble with us. We meet uh, Sunday mornings at uh, 9 a.m. for Bible study. And in worship at 10 a.m., we have Bible study at 7 p.m. on Thursday nights. Uh, you can, uh, uh, if you're in the Martinsville area, Sundays uh, as well, as well as on Wednesday nights at uh, 7 p.m., uh, Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. in Danville, 120 American Legion in Danville. Here's the content information for those brethren there. And, of course, WHIG-TV uh, tonight at 10 o'clock. If you're online, you can go to WHIG-TV, I think, Brother Michael Robertson is going to be down there uh, working on that, uh, doing that program from uh, Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. So uh, a lot of ways in which you can study uh, God's Word and uh, uh, be associated with the people who are bringing you the gospel and never ask you for a dime. Uh, that's just the kind of people we are. So we hope that you will take advantage of this. We, we want, to, uh, uh, want you to know that we, we love your soul and we love you enough to study God's Word with you. Sometimes... Uh, what God's Word has to say is somewhat difficult, but it's not so difficult that you cannot obey it. John said his commands are not grievous. And so there's, there, it may be some time, maybe some difficulty, but it's not something that you cannot do. Uh, something that you cannot uh, 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 obey. It's not, it's not impossible. You just have to put your mind to it and determine that I'm going to do what God says and put self uh, behind you, and uh, we'll help you do that very thing. And if you'll if you just let us. So... Let us know uh, how we can be of assistance to you. <clears throat> Tonight, friends, I want to, I want to uh, discuss, uh, in part, the idea behind this movie. This movie is seemingly uh, 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 doing very well, I think. A lot of people are, are watching it. Heaven is for real. Uh, people have asked me about this movie. I don't really intend on doing a review of the movie. I've never seen it, and I don't really intend to see it. But uh, what I've heard about the premise behind it is really enough for me because I know what the Bible has to say about heaven. I don't need a movie or a book to tell me that heaven is real. That, well, not a book that man has written. I have a book that tells me heaven is for real, and that's the only one I need. But what I find amazing is individuals will take a movie like this and uh, based upon a book that was written that was written based upon uh, things that a four-year-old remembered about a time when he was laying in the, in the operating room on a, uh, on a table and he comes back and he tells these things and now ten years later uh, they're being written down and recorded for us and all of a sudden people are like whoa Heaven is for real. Did you know that? Well, that's, that's really not breaking news. 
people. That's really not breaking news. But what I want to talk about is not so much the movie as the premise behind the movie. The premise behind individuals who will look at this movie and read this book and determine that, hey, this is so wonderful. This is a miracle. It talks about a, a miracle. The, the, the title is Heaven is for Real. It's a, a little boy's... Um, uh, a little boy's story of a trip to heaven and back. Now, is that really something that is going to give us some credibility? Is that going to be something we're increasing our faith based upon? A lot of people seem to indicate that this is something that's really going to, to strengthen their faith and, and uh, bolster their assurance that, that heaven is indeed real because this little boy came back and told us. Well, friends, you know, if I, if I recall... It seems to me that a lot of people, when they do this, are neglecting what God has said about individuals who come along and tell dreams or tell visions, tell stories, give their experiences about what they have seen, heard, or so forth. And they fail to realize that God has always uh, devised a plan where man can know God's will without things like this. As a matter of fact, God warned about individuals who, come, who came, would come to his people and would tell them stories like this. For example, uh, in Jeremiah chapter 23 and verse 25, Jeremiah 23, 25 through 28, and I'm going to put the, the scripture up here so we can uh, read it together. But Jeremiah 23 and uh, verse 28, uh, God is going to... God's going to make a statement about these kind of, of, of prophets. He says, I have heard what the prophets said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Now, is that not what we're dealing with today? And it's not just this one book that Colton uh, Burpo uh, is supposedly writing, or his father Todd is writing down the things that Colton uh, experienced. It's not just that book, but countless people have, have made the claims that they've had a dream or they've had a vision. And God says, even back in the days of old, he said the prophets are lying, telling the people that they have dreamed a dream. And he said, how long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yes, they are prophets of the seat of their own heart. Now listen, they're prophets of the seat of their own heart. Uh, they, uh, what do they do? They think, which think to lead, uh, which, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, which they tell to every man his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten, um, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. And so what it is, they are listening to individuals that are getting them to replace the truth of God's word and the truth that the prophets of old have told for a false God based upon a false message, a prophecy of deceit. Now, could it be the case, could it be the case that individuals who uh, think that stories like this, this uh, heaven is real book, do you think that, that it could be the case that they think it's true and to the point that they now have neglected what God has said? I submit to you that's exactly what has happened. They have gone aside and they have listened to something that is uh, a lot of fluff, a lot of feel good, a lot of emotions, and never stopped to consult what the Bible said. Now listen again. In Deuteronomy 13, Deuteronomy 13, uh, beginning at verse 1, this is, what, this is what God said. He said, If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams, and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or wonder come to pass. Whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods which thou hast not known, uh, and, let us, and let us serve them. Now notice, this man is telling a dream, and supposedly it's come to pass, maybe it seems like it came to pass, and therefore you should listen to him, because it has come to pass. It seems to be verified. But it's really not in agreement with what God has said in other places because certainly God would never tell someone to go and follow another God. See that? 
So in some way, he has deceived people into thinking that this is a new revelation, a new message, and now we need to go and follow another God. Listen to what God says. He says, Thou shalt not, uh, thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or of that dreamer of dreams, for the Lord your God proveth you. Notice, he's proving you, he's testing, whether ye love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul. It's a test. How, how well do you love God? And he said, And that prophet, uh, you, shall, you shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and shall, and shall serve him and cleave unto him. And that prophet, verse 5, And that prophet of that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he had spoken to turn you away from the Lord. Friends, you ever stop and think that these things that people are seeing, these, these visions or these dreams that people conjure up and now are writing books about or making movies about, did you ever stop and think that maybe, maybe they are leading you away from God instead of shoring up your faith in God? Now the Bible says clearly in Romans 10, Romans 10 and verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if a book such as this is going to be written and it's supposed to bolster your faith, then it should be in keeping with the Word of God. But if it's in keeping with the Word of God, we don't need it because we have the Word of God. If it's different from the Word of God, then we don't need it because it's false. And so this is what I'm, I'm, trying, to get, I'm trying to understand and trying to un, uh, help you to see that I submit to you that people are going after these strange dreams and visions that people have had to the point that they're neglecting the Word of God. Now, if I were to tell you, or if someone were to come up and tell me that, well, I had a dream and I had a vision, I went to heaven. I died and I came back to life. You know what I, I'd be inclined to do? I would be inclined to examine whether that person is telling me anything remotely what I know to be true. Now, what do you mean by that? Well, it's like this. Let me just say it this way. If, if I saw this book, or I saw this movie, and someone is trying to convince me that this is real, that this is true, that this, this little boy did go to heaven, he visited heaven, and he talked to Jesus, sat on Jesus' lap, played ball with his grandpa, or whatever he's supposed to have done. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I don't know if you're telling me the truth, so I'm going to go to a source that I know is true. Now, friends, this is what I'm talking about. In Acts chapter, Acts chapter 19, for example, Acts chapter 19 to verse 13, you recall that in this occasion, there were certain vagabond Jews, exorcists, that took upon them to call over uh, uh, them that had evil spirits the name of Jesus. In other words, they're trying to cast out spirits, uh, cast out the evil demons, and they said, We adjure you by the name of Jesus, uh, whom Paul preacheth. And uh, there were seven sons of Sceva that did this. And n notice what the, uh, the one with the demon said. The demon said, the evil spirit said, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? And that would be my statement to someone who comes up and says, well, I had a dream and I went to heaven. And I'm going to say, well, I don't know you, but I know a lot of people, or I know of a lot of people that I believe wholeheartedly could give me some evidence about what, is, what it's really like on the other side. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go check with them. See, I'm going to check with them and see if what they're telling me is anything like what you're telling me. Then maybe your story pans out. But I'm not going to trust, I'm not going to trust a 14-year-old boy telling me what happened to him when he's four years old or his father telling me what happened 10 years ago to his son uh, based upon things that his son said 10 years ago. I'm not going to trust that. Unless I can go to the Bible and find, you know what, let someone who, who was raised from the dead, let's, let's see what they have to say. So, so that's what I would do. That's what I would do. So let's just do that. Let's just go to the Bible uh, and let's just see what, what someone would say or someone did. So let's hear what people that we know came back from the dead, 
Let's hear what they had to say. All right? Let, let's first example. Let's go to this. In 1 Kings 17, 17. 1 Kings 17 and verse 17. Here we have the, uh, the, the widow of Zarephath, and uh, uh, Elijah comes to her house, and uh, he says, what, she, what are you doing? She said, well, I'm going to make a little meal, a little cake for, my, for me and my son, and then we're going to eat it and we're going to die because we're, we're, you know, we don't have anything. And, of course, Elijah, uh, God providently uh, provides for her, and Elijah stays there, and, and she takes care of him, so forth. But notice this, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick, and the sickness was so uh, sore that there was no breath left in him. Now notice this. And she said unto Elijah, What have I to do with thee, O thou man of God? Art thou come to call, uh, come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? Now, so her son dies, and so here's what Elijah says. He said, Give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up to a loft and abode there and uh, laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I, I sojourn? by slaying her son. And so he prays to God, and notice this, he stretched, he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray this, let this child's uh, soul come into him again. And notice this, verse 22, And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came to him again, and he revived. And so Elijah brings this child back, back to life. Now, here's what I would say. Let's see what this young boy said. Now, everybody, well, let's listen to what Colton said. Colton wrote a book. His dad wrote a book about something Colton said. So let's just find out. Let's just find out from the widow of Zarephath's son. What, what was it like on the other side? What was it like when you died and, and you went to heaven? No, went to heaven. Surely he'd go to heaven. He's a child, right? So what was it like? Well, you want to you hear what he said? Do you want to read the words that the widow of Zarephath's son has recorded for us to know what's happening on the other side? Well, let's, let's read those words. There's not any friends. There's not anything. He didn't record anything. He didn't say anything. He didn't describe anything what happened. And so we can't, we, we have to say, well, Maybe, maybe he just didn't see a lie. All right? Maybe we need to find somebody else. All right? Because we, we're still not going to discount uh, a four-year-old little boy and feel good story about going to heaven, so maybe we need to find someone else. Well, let's talk about the Shunammite's son. In, in 2 Kings 4, in 2 Kings 4, now we have Elisha. 2 Kings 4 and verse 18. We have uh, Elisha. Uh, who has promised, or he, uh, God has blessed this woman and her, her husband with a son for the goodness that they've shown Elisha. And so the child was grown and fell on the day that he went out to his father and the reapers. And he said unto his father, My head, my head. And he said unto the lad, Carry him yonder to his mother. And when he had taken him and brought him and set him on his mother, set him on her knees till noon, then he died. So the child died. So the... So this woman, she goes and she finds Elisha. She goes all the way down, she finds Elisha. And let's come down to verse 35. Verse 35, what does Elisha do? Elisha takes the child up, uh, lays him on the bed. He, he, he lays upon him, he, he prays. Notice this, he walks about the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon the child and the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes. And he called the woman uh, I called Gehazi and said, call the Shunammite. And so he called her. And when she was uh, come up, he said, take up the lad, thy son. And she went and fell at his feet and bowed herself uh, to the ground and took up her son and, and went out. So Elisha restores this, this young boy to life, brings him back from the other side. Well, I wonder what he said about it. How did he describe the other side? How did, did he see a bright light? Did he sit on God's lap? Did he play ball with the other prophets? What, what did he do? Did he say his great-grandfather? Did he say he's somebody that he'd never seen before and never met before in this life? Because that's what we're told, that's what we're, we're supposed to believe happened when someone goes to heaven. 
Well, let's read the words that, were, that are recorded that the, that the Shunammite woman's son uh, wrote about his experience in heaven. None there. There's none there. Well, James, you know, you, you just find the people that didn't write anything. God, God didn't have anything to say or he didn't record their words. Well, do you think that might be something to consider? Do you think that might be a reason why? Notice this. In 2 Kings 13, verse 20. Here, now, here's a story. You want to talk about a movie. 2, Corinthians, 2 Kings, I'm sorry, 2 Kings 13 and verse 20. Now, read this. <clears throat> Elisha died and they buried him. And the bands of Moabites invaded the land at the coming of the year. And, uh, and it came to pass as they were burying a man that, behold, they spied a band of men and they cast the man into the sepulcher of Elisha. So they're trying to hurry up and bury this man. So they throw him into a sepulcher. They let him down to a sepulcher. And when the man was let down and touched the bones of Elisha, he revived and stood up on his feet. Now, let me tell you, now that would be a blockbuster movie right there. If you want to read a book about something, man, I'd like to read a book about this. I would surely like to see a book and, and see a movie about a man who was revived by touching uh, uh, Elisha's bones. Boy, I wonder what he has to say. Doesn't he have a story to tell? Well, let's see what he has to say about it. Let's read on to the next verse. He doesn't say anything about it. What? You mean his story's not told either? You mean God didn't record a story about what happened to this man who was dead and brought back to life? Oh, what is, what is God doing to us that he doesn't record such a story? I mean, we have to leave, leave it up to little four-year-old Colton to tell us a story. All right? Well, maybe we need to find someone else. Well, let's look at this. In Matthew, I'm mean, assuming Luke 7. In Luke 7 and verse 12, look what we have. In Luke chapter 7, in verse 12, we have a widow son. And it came to pass, when, when he, uh, and, and now when he came nigh to the gate of the city, that's talking about Jesus, behold, there was a dead man carried, carried out the only son of his mother, and she was a widow, and much uh, people of the city was with her. Now what do you think happened? What do you think happened? Uh, and when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her, and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the bier, and they that bare him stood still. And he said, Young man, I say unto thee, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Now that would be a good story to tell. Surely this young boy, surely this young man has a story to tell. Maybe, maybe his words are recorded for us. What happened on the other side? Did you see a bright light? You know, did you go see Elijah? Did you see Moses? Did you go sit in, in, uh, uh, in, in Lazarus' lap? Or did you play ball with your grandfather? What, what did you do? Friends, there's nothing recorded. He didn't say anything. We, we don't hear anything about what this young man saw or what this young man did. He took a trip to heaven, so to speak, and he didn't say anything about it. Now, do you see, the, do you see a, a pattern here? We've had the widow of, uh, of Zarephath's son. We have the Shunammite woman's son. We've had a, a man that was thrown into a, the sepulcher of Elisha, brought back to life. We have the, the widow's son, brought back to life. And no one has said a single word about what it was like on the other side. Well, here we have uh, Jarius's daughter. Now, Jarius is a uh, uh, ruler of the synagogue. We're in Mark chapter 5 and verse 22. Mark 5, 22. And behold, there cometh one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jarius by name, and when he saw him, he fell uh, at his feet. And here's what he said. He, he besought him greatly, saying, My daughter... Life at the point of death. Uh, I pray thee come and lay hands on her that she may uh, be healed and she shall live. So Jesus goes with him. He goes with him. Now as he's going there, this is where the woman touches the hem of Jesus' garment. And so he, he stops and he deals with her. And, uh, and so while he's dealing with this situation, notice what happens now in verse 35. As he's dealing with this woman, 
here come some people from Jairus' house. Uh, and while he and while he yet spake, there came, a, there came from the root of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why trouble? Why troublest thou the master any further? You know what Jesus does? Jesus goes to his house and raises up his daughter. People laugh. They mock. They, they laugh him to scorn, the Bible says, because she was dead, but he raises her up, and she was about 12 years old, the Bible says. Now, what did the 12-year-old tell us? See, all these children seem to be raised from the dead. Surely, surely there is someone that's going to tell us something uh, that took place on the other side. Surely they can tell us something uh, about what, what, what it was like when they made their trip to heaven. No one says anything. Nothing's recorded. And friends, my point is, it seems to me that people don't look at the Bible and realize that God has not told us all these great details about what happens when you die and you leave this life and go to the next. But yet people will reject that. And they say, well, that's not enough information. We need to embellish it. We need to go and find someone who, who died and came back to life. And, oh, it's a miracle. And we'll believe that is true. But yet Jairus' daughter didn't record anything. Lazarus, of all people, this is the man who should have written a book. This was the man who should have written the book. He was in the grave four days. Behold, he stinketh, his sister said. Well, he stinks by now. Don't raise him back up. He stinks. But in John 11, verse 43, John 11, verse 43, notice what the Bible says. When he had thus spoken, talking about Jesus, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound with grave clothes and his face was bound with a napkin uh, and Jesus said loose him and then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus had, had uh, did believed on him now why didn't Lazarus write a book Lazarus should have written a book I can just see it now you know yeah I was I was dead I was I was I was sitting in Abraham's bosom and all of a sudden I was called back and I sat up and of course I couldn't see anything because I had a, had a, a cloth over my face and uh, so I'm, I'm wobbling out of the, out, out of the tomb because I'm all wrapped up and someone, you know, jerks the wrapping and I spin around like a mummy, like a, top, like a mummy top and, you know, and boom, there I was. I mean, if we're going to embellish a story, let's embellish it. But no, Lazarus doesn't tell anything like that. Lazarus doesn't say anything about that. Now, why didn't he tell it? Surely he would have had time to tell it, right? Surely, if anybody's going to tell a story, Lazarus would, right? But, because here's a man, here's a man that not only has a good story about life after death, but now he has a story about life after death and then a life when they tried to put him to death. Because all the Jewish leaders, they wanted to kill Lazarus too, just to get rid of the witness, get rid of the evidence that Jesus had done something. Now, man, that's a story to tell. But Lazarus doesn't even tell that. Now, friends, really? Are you really caught up on this heaven is real business to the point that you're believing what people say they had a dream about, they had a vision about? They died and they came back and this is what I saw and this is what I did. Did you ever stop to think that these things might have just been in this young boy's mind? He'd heard them talk about his grandpa or he'd heard him talk about so and so and that was just a dream that he had? That was some, something that, uh, some uh, bits of information floating around in his mind that they didn't know that he knew? I mean, what about Dorcas? Dorcas didn't get to tell her story either. I mean, here's a, here's a woman in uh, Acts 9, 36 through 42. She's done all kinds of good things. Now, if anybody went to heaven, surely it would be Dorcas. Look at this. Acts 9, Acts 9, verse uh, 36. There was a certain uh, disciple named Tabitha, which by interpretation is called Dorcas. 
And uh, this woman uh, was full of good works and alms deeds, which she did. And it came to pass that in those days that she was sick and she died. And when they washed, they laid her in the upper chamber. And so they send down to Joppa and they bring, uh, and they bring Peter up. Peter comes in and uh, he puts everybody out of the room and he raises her up. He kneels next to her. He kneels down, he prays, and turning, uh, and turning him to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes, and when, Peter, and when she saw Peter, she sat up, and he gave her his hand, and she uh, uh, and lifted her up, and when, she, and when he had called the saints and the widows, presented her life. Now, surely Dorcas went to heaven. I mean, she was a disciple. She was faithful. She was full of good alms. She did, every, she did all these good things for people. I mean, the widows and, and everybody sitting there crying and they're showing Peter, this is what she made for me. This is what she's done for me. Oh, she's a wonderful woman. Surely she went to heaven. So what did she tell us about her trip to heaven? What did she tell us about her trip to the other side? Not a thing. Not a thing. Didn't say anything about it. She didn't write a book. She didn't tell us a story about what happened on the other side. Or what about Eutychus? Here was a young man in Acts 20, verse 8 through 12. You listen to Paul preach. He's up in the, in the, in the upper room, three stories up, and he falls out. He falls, he falls asleep, and he falls out, and he dies. Now, why didn't he get to tell his story? See, friends, this is my point. When you see people say, well, I'm going to tell you a story about me dying going to heaven. The Bible is full of accounts where people died and came back and they didn't say a single, nary, solitary word about their life after death, about what they saw when they died. You know why? Because it wasn't important. It wasn't important enough for God to put it in the Bible. And therefore, if it wasn't important enough for God to put in the Bible, why should then I accept the word of someone who says their four-year-old told them something ten years ago and we're writing a book about it and making a movie about it? Not to mention the fact that, look at this, in 2 Corinthians 12 and verse 2, 2 Corinthians 12, 12, and I believe Paul's talking about himself here, and if he's not, it doesn't really matter, but the, 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 uh, the point is still uh, very clear. He said, I knew a man in Christ about 14 years ago, whether in the body, I cannot tell, whether out of body, I cannot tell. He didn't know if he was having an out-of-body experience or in-body experience. He wasn't sure, but notice this. He said, I cannot tell, uh, God knoweth, all right? Uh, and such a one was caught up to the third heaven. The third heaven. Now keep that in mind, third heaven. Four, the th three heavens? Well, you got the heavens where the birds fly. you got the heavens where the stars are. And then this is the third heaven, which Paul later is going to say in verse 4, that is paradise. Now, how that he was caught up into paradise. Now, you may recall paradise is where the thief was going to be when he died. Jesus said, this day you'll be with me in paradise. <clears throat> paradise was where uh, the, the saved uh, go when they die. It's in the Hadean realm, but it is in the, the safe side, if you will, the, uh, the, the peaceful, restful side of paradise. And he said he was caught up in the paradise, and he heard un speakable words which is not lawful for man to utter. He couldn't talk about it. An apostle Paul couldn't talk about it. He couldn't write about what he saw when he died. Now let's think about this, friends. The apostle Paul who wrote half of the New Testament, if there was ever a person who was qualified to write, it was the apostle Paul. If there was ever a person who could write about what happens when this life is over or when you die, it was the Apostle Paul. And yet he was not allowed to talk about what he saw or what he heard. 
So the Apostle Paul cannot write, the Apostle Paul who wrote half the New Testament cannot write a book, but a 14-year-old uh, can write a book about what he saw when he was four years old, and that's gospel. I'll take Paul over the little child who wrote a book. I'll trust the inspired author, the one that I know is inspired, and I know would tell me the truth about what happens when this life is over, as opposed to someone just out of the blue that never heard of, that's obviously not telling me things that are in, in, in keeping with the Bible. Now, why would you then believe this fellow? Why would you believe a movie? Why would you believe a book based upon a story that someone uh, is telling you about what they saw and what they did? Because here, here's what I'm saying, friends. Someone says, well, I came back from the dead and here's what, here's, what, here's what it was like. Here's what heaven was like. But you know, most people don't know this. I don't know. You may know this, but most people probably don't know this. But you know, this little boy didn't really die. He went to heaven. He didn't even die. Now, most people who say they went to heaven, they at least died. At least they flatlined on the, on the table. But look at this. Here's an article talking about the, uh, the, the uh, responses to criticism that this family is having. It says, skeptics point out the fact that Colton never actually flatlined during the surgery, something they say would preclude him from a visit to heaven. You don't get to go to heaven unless you die what most people say. So you can't tell us about heaven. Well, you know what happens? This is typical. This is typical. When people have an experience, they then go to the Bible and try to justify what they have, what they think they saw. And so here's the father, Todd Burpo, doesn't dispute that his son never stopped breathing and or, nor actually died and has spent time reading scripture, soul searching to understand how his son's experience could be possible. How is it even possible? How about it wasn't possible? How about it didn't happen? How about it wasn't possible? You're going to work with the Lord. How you doing, Brother James? I'm doing very well. Brother James, you preaching tonight. You preaching and teaching. I tell you one thing. The way you are preaching and teaching tonight Anybody can understand that. I believe a little kid can really understand that. Well, I hope so. Yeah, go ahead. I said, well, I hope so. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All righty. All right, thanks for your call. All right. Really enjoyed. All right, thank you. All right. So, you see this? But isn't this typical? When people... When people I have a so-called experience. Now they try to justify it. Well, let me read the Bible, and let me let me let me see if I can make the Bible fit my experience. Now that's exactly what the father did. That's exactly what the father did. Now look at this. Look what the father says. He says, "I I search the scripture. I'm, well, how is this possible? How is it possible for my son to get to heaven? How is it possible for him to get to heaven and uh, and not have died?" You want to work with the Lord? Yes. Uh, I wanted to go see that movie, but since I've been listening to you, I don't care to go see it now. Okay. Well, I, I think that's... Uh, I think you're doing a good... I mean, you're really preaching the Word of God like the gentleman said before. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Really enjoy your preaching tonight. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Best it week. All right. You too. Have a good night. You want to work from the Lord? You want to work from the Lord? Caller, are you there? Okay. All right. So, you know, and my intent is to get people to realize that uh, uh, if you stop and check the Bible when it comes to biblical things, you might be surprised about what you'll learn about uh, uh, things like this, you know what's what, what's really not in the what's really not in the Bible, or just how far removed from the Bible these things are. So here's the father; he's trying to justify the experience, and look what he does. Look what he does. He comes up and he says, 
in the Bible, there are several examples of people who actually died and came back. Well, that's what we looked at. That's what we looked at. And he says, but there are several examples of people who never die. Well, he's, he's got a point there. There are some examples of people who, uh, who never die and went to heaven. Now, that's exactly right. So let's look, let's look at a couple of those. Or let's, look at, uh, let's just go to Genesis. Uh, let's just go to Genesis and uh, let's, uh, uh, let's look. I believe we're looking at Genesis. I'm going to get my Bible here. Uh, Enoch is one. Enoch is one of them. And also in Genesis chapter uh, 5, uh, Genesis chapter 5 and verse 23. Let's just notice this. Genesis 5, verse 23. And all the days of Enoch were 360 and five years. And Enoch walked with God and was not, for God took him. He was translated that he should not see death. Now, that, that you know, the, the daddy burpo has, has a good point there. That's right. There are some people who went to heaven and didn't have to die. So his son, he thinks, well, his son could go to heaven and not die. What's the difference between what his son supposedly did and what Enoch did? The other person is Elijah who uh, went up to heaven in a whirlwind and was translated. They didn't die, yet they went to heaven. Now, what's the difference? They didn't write anything down either. They didn't write anything about down about what it was like. They just went to heaven and they didn't come back. This little boy supposedly has done something that, that uh, uh, even Jesus hadn't done. Jesus died and went to heaven and he hadn't come back yet. This little boy's already been to heaven to come back. See that? He did something that Elijah didn't do. He did something that Enoch didn't do. And yet we're supposed to believe him. You see, you see what I'm talking about, friend? All this is is a movie of, that's hopped up on emotion. Now, if you're going to believe these uh, uh, people's uh, uh, stories about going to heaven, then you're going to have to believe a whole lot of things. All right? You're on the word of the Lord. Yes, James. It's uh, good studies tonight. It's it's like all the uh, the pe preachers out there uh, teaching them. Uh, false doctrine and everything. They're out there having people throw money to them. That little boy and his dad, they had money thrown to them. I mean, they're getting their share of the, uh, you know, the almighty dollar, the mm -hmm. fruit of all evil. Right. Of course, they say they're not doing it for the money, but, uh, you know, I, I don't understand. Why, you, why would you do that? It's a dream. You know, it's not it's not based upon the Bible. So, why? What's the only other reason that I can think of that you would that you would do something like this? So, you're right. Well, I appreciate your call. Yes, sir. Y'all yeah, have a good All right. Night. All right. Now, so now, if you're going to believe this, you're going to believe this little story. Are you going to believe this story? Now, the Seventh Day Adventist, they get their doctrine from Ellen G. White who, guess what she did? She took a trip to heaven too. Right? She took a trip to heaven. Now, now listen. Listen to what uh, Mr. Ron Rogers says about Ellen G. White and her trip to heaven. Now, uh, a couple of weeks ago when I made the presentation at the Digital Data Conference uh, uh, room or hall, uh, Mr. Ophiel was there. Uh, later, when I watched his television program, he said on that television program, he mentioned something about Ellen White, and uh, he had on the screen from the book uh, Early Writings a statement that she had made about a vision that she had. and. Uh, 
the book of uh, Joel, the second chapter, tells us that in the, in the time of the end, the last days, that there will be those who will have dreams and those who will have visions. Well, uh, that's, that's a prophecy that uh, we find in the book of Joel. God said to, to Joel, and so if somebody has a vision or a dream here in these last days, well, so what? She did say that she had these visions, and she wrote them down. Friends, she had to be inspired some way or another by God to write such beautiful uh, literary uh, uh, words describing the life of Christ and the, the gospel and how to come to Jesus. Okay, so here's the Seventh-day Adventist saying, well, the Bible says people are going to see, have dreams and see visions. So, therefore, they've got to be inspired. Now, are you going to accept everybody's dream and vision? Because I suspect that people who have dreams and visions don't accept the Seventh-day Adventists. They all don't accept the Seventh-day Adventist dreams and visions. So that, now, here's Ellen G. White's dream and her vision. She, she went back to heaven, and that's where she got the doctrine that of, the seven, of the Sabbath day still being in effect today. Now, I hear people all the time calling and say, well, the Ten Commandments, Ten Commandments, you need to keep the Ten Commandments, but they don't keep the Sabbath day. But if you're going to believe that someone can go to heaven and see a vision and get some information, well, Ellen G. White, she goes back and writes about it. She says, I saw, I saw that the, the, the Sabbath day was not nailed to the cross. Now, are you going to take that? You want to take little Colton's story about what he saw, playing ball with his granddad and whatever? So you're going to have to take hers too. You're on the word from the Lord. Yeah, are you jealous over the movie? Sir? You jealous over that movie? No, I'm not jealous over the movie. Well, you just ain't nothing but a little candy ass cry, baby. Okay. There, I, I thought that was the that was the bad mouth Baptist that calls him time to time. Okay. So, um, uh, you know, friends, what we're what we're trying to do is get you to see that if you're going to accept one thing, if you're going to accept one vision as being true, then you want to accept the rest of them. Now, somebody says, "Well, the Seventh Day Adventists, yeah, okay, we'll let them slide because you know they believe in Jesus, and so we we were not going to talk about them because you know th they may not be mainstream like everybody else, but you know we'll let them have their little vision." We'll have to have the little vision, their little trip to heaven. Well, are you going to let this man have his trip to heaven? See? Here's a man. Meet the man who's been to heaven four times. Now listen, if you're going to accept Ellen G. White going to heaven, now I think she probably went to heaven a couple more times, but if you're going to accept uh, a story, the, the four-year-old boy story who went to heaven one time, you're going to have to accept this guy. He's been four times. And, and that's not all. Listen to, what, listen to this. This man's name is uh, Sabusio Mathimbu, a 64-year-old man from KwaZulu, Natal, in South Africa. And uh, he has been to heaven four times. And he says there are 11 heavens. And he's been to them all. 11 heavens he's been to them all. And uh, he, he's gone in 1998. He went to heaven in 2004, 2006, and 2008. Now, not only, not only did, this, did this man go to heaven four times, but I didn't really get a good picture of it, but you see this behind him? This is actually a map. It's a map of heaven that he has drawn. So, look. I mean, if anybody knows their way around heaven, it's got to be this man, right? I mean, come on. He's been there four times. He's got a map of heaven. I mean, we, can't, we cannot say that this man is not legitimate. Really? So maybe, maybe what we need to do is maybe we need to get a copy of this map and send it over to uh, 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 Colton Burpo so when next time he takes a trip to heaven, he knows his way around. Or anybody else that makes their trip to heaven. See, uh, Jesse Duplantis, and Jesse Duplantis has uh, gone to heaven. Uh, Benny Hinn, he's gone to heaven. Now, 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 I bet they don't know their way around heaven like this guy does. He's been there four times. You see how ridiculous it gets? 
See how absurd it gets? When you get away from the Bible and you start listening to people say, well, they have their own uh, opinions and beliefs and that, yeah, they, they've made a trip to heaven. Friends, this is, my, this is my question. Why is it that people will believe other individuals who claim to be a prophet or a prophetess and they've had a dream, they've had a vision, they've been to heaven, they've seen what's on the other side, they died and went to heaven and came back and they, they're telling about everything. They'll believe that. They'll believe that. Why? Why will they believe that and then turn around and reject the Bible, which is the book that tells about heaven. It tells about God. You wouldn't even know about heaven or about God or that it even existed except you had a book that talked about it. And yet when it comes to understanding these very important matters, people go, Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go see this movie. I'm gonna read this book, and I'm going to believe it. Because most people going to see this movie or read this book will never check the facts out with the book that talks about heaven. Same way with like the book, the, the movie Noah, or, or any other movie that's based upon uh, supposedly based upon Bible or biblical things. They'll never check the real source, and they'll accept it as truth. And the next thing you know, they go. Well, I heard that somewhere. It has to be true. Look, if you want to know about heaven, the Bible tells you what you need to know about what happens after this life. See, when I said all that, when I was showing all those people that died and came back and didn't tell about anything, I didn't say God never said anything about it. It's just that God never had them tell about it because he gave us all the information that we need to know about what happens after this life. And so what we have to do is just look at that and see how it corresponds with what other people are saying about it. You're on the word from the Lord. Yes, Mr. Oldfield. I was uh, talking about these uh, books and the different, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen the Don Piper book. He's a Baptist uh, minister, and uh, in his book, he went to heaven and didn't see God in his book, but now when he talks about it at different times, he, he saw God on a hill. I thought that was kind of interesting. Well, this this uh, this man that I just told you about that's been to heaven four times yes. uh, uh, from South Africa, he, he, he saw God, he saw Jesus. He said Jesus was a white man and, and God was kind of grayish. Mm. Now, you know, so I, I, I don't know you know, maybe they need to get together and compare notes so we can get the story straight. Well, I, I hate it for them, even though they are lying, and, and they shouldn't be. I, I hate it for them when they stand in front of him. Right. And, 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 and I think it's just, you know, they're self-deluded. They're just, they just, I don't know if they just want to believe something that, that is so far-fetched that someone else can believe in it, or they've just been, uh, they're self-deluded that this is the real but the, but the fact of the matter is they haven't been consulting their Bible or they would know the information, or they could know the information that God uh, has for them to know about, you know, heaven and about uh, the life after this life. So, yes, sir. But I agree with you. I'd, I'd hate to be on their shoes, in their shoes on the day there of judgment. Was a, there was another uh, book. It was a, it was a, his uh, father was a Baptist preacher, and I believe their name was Malarkey. <laughs> I don't know this for a hundred percent, but the the boy's name was Kevin Malarkey, and I don't know that it's. But I've heard it said that the the son tried to stop the book that the father wrote. Kind of like in this case, this this movie that just come out, the father wrote the book. Right. When in the Malar in the Kevin Malarkey, his father was a Baptist minister, and and they say I don't know for a hundred percent, but they say the boy tried to stop the book from coming out. Hmm. Well, he he would he'd be doing the uh, the world a uh, a favor if he if he accomplished that. Yeah. Well, have a good night. Enjoy the right. show. Thank you. All right. So 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 here's here's what we need to realize, folks. In the in the last few minutes we have here, if you want to know what happens after this life, God tells you enough to know about it. We can know what heaven or or paradise, the third heaven or paradise is like, and we can know what. We can know what uh, it looks like and we can know what people are, are doing when this life is over. 
It's right here. It's in the Bible in Luke 16, 19 through 31. But see, a lot of people don't want to, they don't want to talk about this verse. They don't want to show this picture of heaven. You know, I, haven't, I don't know that anybody that I've ever heard of that's gone to heaven saw anything like what Jesus said is going to take place when people die. You know, I, I hear people dying and they go, well, they, see their, they see their pets and everything else. There's not going to be any pets in heaven, friends. I, I'll just tell you that. No, no pets in heaven. But what you will find in the Bible is, is this. In Luke chapter 16, and look at verse 19. Here's a picture of this life, our life after this life is over. A certain rich man clothed in, uh, in uh, fine linen and fared something every day, and then there was a poor man, a beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at the gate full of sores, designed to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22, And it came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. And the rich man also died and was, uh, uh, and was buried. And he, and in hell, he lifted up his eyes, being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water. And, uh, uh, and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. Now there's a picture about what happens when someone dies. No one comes back and talks about hell. No one comes and talks about, well, I looked down and I saw torments. Or better yet, more likely, no one comes back and says, I died and I looked up and I saw Abraham's bosom and I saw Lazarus in a place of rest. No one talks about that. That, that tells me for sure, friends, that when people uh, tell stories or have dreams and see visions about what happened to this life, they haven't consulted the Bible at all. And I know this. If you want a picture about what happened to this life, if people truly did die and come back, this is what they would see and this is what they would be saying. They would be saying, I have brethren send someone to test, send Lazarus to testify to them that they may also, uh, lest they also come to this place of torment. They would come back saying, you don't want to go to hell. You don't want to die and not obey the gospel. That's what they'd be saying, but no one ever talks about that. It's always love, you know, it's always unicorns and, and rainbows. But friends, here's the picture. God has given us enough information to know what this life is like when, when we die. What life will be like when we, when we go to the other side. The question is, do you want to believe this book? Do you want to believe uh, this book? Or do you want to read a, believe a book that someone writes just to make money and is on a best-selling list? Or do you want to read the one that you know and you can trust and you can verify the author is giving you the truth? Friends, we want to help you. We want to help you and, and save you from the place of torments so that when you die, you'll be in Abraham's bosom. You'll be with Lazarus and, and the righteous who are in paradise awaiting the judgment. We want to do that. If you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God, you repent of your sins, confess Christ before man, and be baptized for the mission of sins, then God will add you to his church and you then can be with the saved and you have the hope of eternal life. If we can assist you in doing that very thing, we want, to, we want to do that. We want to give you our content information so that you know how to reach us. And, and uh, if we can assist you in any way, we want to do that very thing. Friends, I'm, I'm out of time. I'm out of time, so I hope that this has been beneficial. I hope it's helped you. I appreciate the calls and individuals saying that it's helped them to, you know, appreciate the fact that they don't need to go see that movie. I'd encourage you to stay home and read the Bible. Till next time, have a good night. Always remember to ask, what does the Bible say? And you get a word from the Lord. Good night. Real Local, WGSR 47.1 in high definition. The views expressed on this program do not necessarily...